welcome to this National Bee Unit presentation on small hive beetle, Athena timidia. In this presentation, you will find out about small hive beetles origins and designation, their life cycle and the anatomical features of the adults and the larvae. I will tell you about their distribution and how they have spread naturally and with the assistance of humans, how the UK responds to the threat of small hive beetle and what the National Bee Unit and our laboratory at Ferra does when we carry out exotic pest inspections. I will also tell you what you as a beekeeper can do to help monitor for small hive beetle, the treatments that are available and finally I will cover the legislation we work to and why this is important. So where do small hive beetles come from? The beetle is indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa and its geographic distribution is restricted by the Sahara, which is too arid for the beetles to survive and is also an area where bees can't survive, so this prevents the natural spread. Small hive beetles don't present much of a threat in its natural range as the native subspecies of honeybees, Apis mellifera scutellata, have learnt to coexist with it. These bees will harass the small hive beetle when they enter colonies and colonies will abscond from hives if the beetles become a problem. Unfortunately, though, international trade has spread small hive beetle globally. It was introduced to Portugal in 2004 in a consignment of queens from the US, but it was very rapidly detected and eradicated. This was the first time small hive beetle was present on mainland Europe until 2014, when it was detected in southern Italy in the Calabria region. The Italian authorities initially tried to eradicate the incursion by destroying infected hives and treating the soil in apiary to kill small hive beetle, beetle pupae. Unfortunately, though, this was unsuccessful and the beetle spread to Sicily. Since then, the Italian authorities have managed to eradicate the beetle from Sicily and contain its spread in southern Italy, but they have been unsuccessful in eradicating it. This demonstrates the beetle's ability to spread very quickly in a short space of time, and it highlights the importance of beekeepers importing queens responsibly and remaining vigilant for small hive beetle. So because of the threat this beetle poses to apiculture, it's designated as an exotic pest of bees and is notifiable. I will explain more about what this means when I tell you about the legislation that covers it. The life cycle of a small hive beetle starts when an adult female beetle invades a colony and she will lay large number of eggs in crevices within the hive and on stored pollen and sealed brood. The eggs are pearly white and about 1.5 by 0.25 millimetres, which is two thirds the size of a honeybee egg. Each female beetle is capable of laying an enormous number of eggs during her lifetime, between 1,000 and 2,000, so it takes relatively few beetles to produce a severe infestation. After two to six days, these eggs will hatch and the small hive beetle larvae feed on pollen, honey, bee eggs and brood. The damage that this feeding creates causes the honey within the colony to ferment and spoil. When the larvae are between seven to 14 days old, they enter the wandering stage, while they will exit the colony and group together in a procession, moving together en masse and burrowing into the soil. Larvae can travel up to 200 metres during this wandering stage and prefer moist, sandy, warm soil where they will burrow down to between 20 centimetres and 60 centimetres. Pupation can take between 8 to 84 days, depending on the temperature, texture and moisture of the soil. In the US and Southern Africa, the beetles can produce six generations a year, with this being higher in tropical regions. Adult beetles will emerge from the soil after pupation, and they can fly up to 16 kilometres to locate honeybee colonies to infest. The beetles are attracted by the odour of the colony and typically travel at dawn and dusk. Beekeepers in the US have observed that the day following an apiary inspection, there is often a huge influx of beetles, suggesting that the odour released from the colony serves as a stimulus for beetles to home in on in the apiary. Small hive beetles overwinter either as pupae in the soil or as adults or eggs in a colony, where they stay near to the cluster of bees to keep warm. Here you can see the anatomical features of an adult small hive beetle. They are between five and seven millimetres long and two and a half to three and a half millimetres wide. When an adult emerges after pupation, they are brown, but they soon darken to black. The head, thorax and abdomen are well separated and they have a pair of distinctive club-shaped antennae. The wing cases, known as elytra, are shorter than the abdomen and this leaves the end of the abdomen exposed, which is unusual in beetles and makes small hive beetle easy to identify. When they feel threatened, the adults can retract their antennae and legs under their exoskeleton and crouch down for protection. Small hive beetle will avoid light and run quickly over combs in a hive to avoid it. The larvae can grow up to one centimetre long and are creamy white or beige in colour and can be confused with greater wax moth larvae, which are also found in bee colonies and are of a similar size and colour. 
the small hive beetle larvae has three pairs of legs at the head end, whereas wax moth larvae have three pairs of short legs at the head, plus four pairs of pro legs on their abdomen. Small hive beetle larvae have three rows of spines on their dorsums or backs and two long spines which protrude from their rear, neither of which wax moth larvae have. Small hive beetle larvae damage combs while they feed and cause honey to ferment and affected combs become slimy and are reported to have a characteristic odour reminiscent of rotten oranges. Small hive beetle larvae don't produce frass, which is a mixture of silk and faecal matter and is similar in appearance to cobwebs, but wax moth larvae do produce this. Small hive beetle larvae are also attracted to light during the wandering stage, whereas wax moth larvae will avoid the light. This map shows the small hive beetles natural distribution in Africa and small hive beetles spread naturally in a number of ways. The adults can fly up to 16 kilometres but will typically travel 10 kilometres when looking for colonies of honeybees to infest. These flights usually take place at dawn and dusk after they have emerged from pupation. Adult beetles can also fly with swarms leaving behind eggs and larvae in the parent colonies and larvae can travel up to 200 metres from the hive when looking for suitable soil to pupate, although on average they only travel around 2 metres from the hive. This map shows the global distribution of small hive beetle, and as you can see, humans have spread small hive beetle to many areas of the globe. Imports and exports of bees and hive products such as honey and wax have been the primary source of spread, but migratory beekeeping has also played a part. The economic impact of the beekeeping industry in the US has been severe. Within two years of its discovery, at least 20,000 colonies were destroyed by the beetle, costing many millions of dollars. The small hive beetle has been found in Manitoba, Canada, where it arrived with a beeswax imported from the US and has also been reported in Quebec. In October 2002, it was found in New South Wales and Queensland, Australia. The economic consequences to the beekeeping industry in Australia have been serious, jeopardising bee exports, pollination services and honey production. Since 2002, the beetle has spread widely and is now considered endemic in New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria and has also been found in the northeast of Western Australia, close to the Northern Territory. This clearly shows the ability of the beetle to hitch a ride right across the world. It is not known how the beetle reached either the US or, or Australia, although shipping into the East Coast ports in the US is considered the most likely route. By the time the beetle was detected in either country, it was already well established, leaving little or no chance of eradication. The only remaining options are to attempt to control it and slow down its spread. The potential implications for UK apiculture are enormous. We must now assume that small hive beetle could spread to the UK and may initially prove as harmful here as it has in Australia and the US. The importation of other commodities such as bumblebees for pollination, plants with compost and fruits such as avocados, bananas, melons and mangoes could also spread small hive beetle as they can survive on these items. To respond to this threat, the National Bee Unit has identified exotic pest risk points around England and Wales where small hive beetle may potentially be imported into the country. As the early detection of small hive beetle is crucial to its eradication, central apiaries have been set up close to these exotic pest risk points. Beekeepers and bee inspectors carry out exotic pest inspections of colonies kept at these central apiaries and send floor debris samples into the National Bee Unit Laboratory at Ferrer, where DNA analysis of these samples is carried out to monitor for small hive beetle and other exotic pests. The highest category risk points, which includes major ports, airports and queen importers, have enhanced central apiaries located close by. Bee inspectors carry out three exotic pest inspections a year at these enhanced central apiaries and also inspect the two nearest neighbour apiaries. Beekeepers also maintain voluntary central apiaries close to these risk points and other lower risk points where they, they monitor for small hive beetle and also send floor debris samples into the laboratory at Ferrer. In addition to the exotic pest inspections that the National Bee Unit carry out, we also run contingency exercises where we plan what would happen if small hive beetle was detected and we educate beekeepers on how to identify and inspect for small hive beetle. So what can you do? You will only see if you look. So please thoroughly inspect all of your hives at least twice a year for pests and diseases and try not to become distracted by swarming or how much honey a colony has. Small hive beetle will choose weak, small, declining or stressed colonies which have reduced defensive behaviour, so pay particular attention to these. 
When carrying out an inspection, pay particular attention to the extremities of the hive for signs of small hive beetle, such as under the roof, the outer frames and the supers and the brood, and the floor. Strong colonies may repel or harass aliens, such as small hive beetles, wasps and Asian hornets, and with stronger colonies, small hive beetle will take refuge in cells or crevices, or may be surrounded or imprisoned by the bees with propolis. Unfortunately, the beekeeper may disrupt this behaviour during inspections and break open propolis jails or disturb hiding small hive beetles, so keep an eye out for them. Tidy apiaries and honey sheds will also help to prevent the spread of small hive beetles should it ever arrive in the UK, and in countries where the beetle is a problem, UV lights are used to attract larvae, and stored equipment is wrapped or frozen to reduce small hive beetle numbers. Refuges and traps can be used in hives and should be checked regularly, taking care not to lose any beetles you may have caught. It's also important for the National Bee Unit to have accurate records of beekeepers in an area in case of pests and disease outbreaks. Up-to-date records are vitally important so that beekeepers can be notified and apiaries visited if there is an issue. Small hive beetles like crevices in hives, so a number of things can be used as in-hive refuges for the beetles, and these can then be used as a method of monitoring for them. A plastic coric strip, which can be inserted at the front of the hive for two to three days. To check for small hive beetle, remove the coric strip from the hive and place it in a sealable clear plastic bag. The strip can then be banged on something, and if beetles are present, they should fall or run out into the bag. If the corex becomes propolis, a piece of wire can be used to poke through the segments. A two-piece plastic trap, such as the beetle barn, may have a sticky area in the centre to catch adult, adult small hive beetles, and this is placed on the top bars of frames within a hive and can be monitored regularly. When closed, bees cannot enter this trap. A cheap homemade in-hive refuge can be a piece of cardboard opened out to expose its ribs with parcel tape on the top face to reduce the bees from nibbling. Place this face down on solid floors and check for adult small hive beetles as you would when using Corex. Fall traps are used to manage small hive beetle populations in hives and they are usually made from plastic, sit between frames and have a well area that holds either liquid bait or diatomaceous earth with a grill on top that prevents bees from accessing the well but has holes large enough for a small hive beetle to fall through. One of these fall traps is the beetle buster which is placed between frames in a brood box Adult small hive beetles drop through small holes and drown in the liquid. Beekeepers need to check these regularly and replace the liquid so that the trap is only half full to stop the beetles from escaping. The west or hood beetle gel is similar to the beetle buster and can be placed between frames or on the bottom bar of a frame in the brood box. Beetles fall through holes and are trapped. If liquid bait is used, they drown, and diatomaceous earth can be used to dehydrate the small hive beetles. If this trap is used on the bottom bar, as shown, the bees may build drone comb above it. In Canada, beekeepers use the bucket method to reduce adult small hive beetle populations during inspections. A bucket containing soapy water with 6mm mesh halfway down is made. Bees are then shaken from frames into the bucket, and any small hive beetles fall through the mesh and drown in the soapy water, but the bees fall on the mesh and fly safely home. There are no in-hive treatments currently authorised in the UK against small hive beetle. Beekeepers overseas have used pesticides to kill the beetles. One of the main in-hive control methods uses treatment strips, originally approved for use against varroa mites. Strips are fixed to the underside of cardboard floor inserts to kill adult beetles and larvae that are attracted there. Appropriate precautions need to be taken to prevent possible contamination of honey and other hive products with treatment residues. Other traps combined with pesticide treatments are also in use. Similarly, no soil treatments are currently authorised against small hive beetle in the UK. Countries where small hive beetle is a problem use a soil drench applied to the ground around the hives in the apiary to kill pupae. In the UK, permission would be required from the BMD or the Chemicals Regulatory Directorate to use equivalent products. Overseas, soil is mainly treated with permethrin in order to kill pupating larvae as they exit the hive to pupate in the soil. However, this substance is highly toxic to bees and great care is always taken to avoid spraying on or close to the hive entrance. Infested hives are destroyed and burnt. Research has shown that the addition of entomophagic fungi and nematodes to soil may be affected on killing pupae. Soil treatments such as ploughing and pressure treating with steam could also be effective. Small hive beetle is a serious threat to honeybees, bumblebees and other bee species. 
Small hive beetles can infest and destroy colonies, honey products and devastate beekeeping, impacting the environment, agriculture and prosperity of the UK, which is why it is a statutory notifiable pest in the UK. The most important thing a beekeeper can do to help us protect the UK from this exotic threat is to remain vigilant and register on BeeBase. Thank you for watching this National Bee Unit presentation on Small Hive Beetle. I hope you've enjoyed it. Further information can be found in these links.